Hello everybody, I am Sam, I'm an artist and illustrator coming to you from Dublin in Ireland. And today I would like to share with you what are my travel art supplies, what art supplies I bring with me all the time, especially during the beginning of summer, late spring, every year consistently I get obsessed with uh, urban sketching and uh, bringing my sketchbook outside and paint out and about everywhere I go. And uh, I spend hours looking at YouTube videos uh, showing travel kits, travel art supplies. So I thought it was uh, a nice idea to share mine with you. So without any lingering on, let's uh, get started. So here we go. This is the material that I bring over during my urban sketching or sketching outside type of situation. And as you can see, hopefully you can see the light is very dark, but it's all quite compact. This can stay in my bag, no problem and uh, I have everything that I need and everything is full size so I really don't tend to have those very small palettes or teeny tiny brushes. It is bothersome enough to paint uh, outside when you don't have a desk and uh, I really don't want to get more bothered by teeny tiny art supplies but as you can see it's very compact and very portable. So let's start with uh, the pencil case. This is a pencil case from Muji and I like it for uh, two reasons. First of all, it's made out of this transparent plastic which is reinforced with a sort of a um, thread mesh. And you can actually see what's inside. So if you are on the go, you just can have a look and grab your pen straight away or if you're leaving you quickly check what's inside it's very convenient and then it's very portable it's very light and very thin so let's have a look what's inside first of all i always keep some tissue paper and uh, this is just a piece of paper from a kitchen roll but as you notice, it has some sort of a texture on it, which is very helpful when you want to add a little bit of texture to your painting or when you just want to clean your brushes. I have this little guy here. This is a Col Erase uh, Prismacolor Pencil that uh, I have been using a lot in the past. It's uh, an erasable color pencil and the color is uh, scarlet or red. Um, it's possible to find here in Ireland, uh, but um, every time I go abroad, especially to America, I buy a bunch of them. It's not currently my favorite tool, but if I'm drawing something really complicated, this is quite good because it doesn't uh, really show much on the sketch uh, when you erase this it's just it leaves just a very faded red line in terms of uh, regular pencil i have a few i'm very fond of regular pencils i have these two mechanical pencils this is a big Ecolutions in uh, 0.7 lead this is just a bog standard the school big mechanical pencil with a little bit of an erase on the back probably 70 cent out of a school supply store something like that but this is my favorite pencil um, in terms of mechanical pencil because it's really light and even if i lose it i don't mind because it was very very cheap and uh, it's quite cute as well we got then a Faber Castell mechanical pencil. This has a little replaceable eraser on the back and it's extraordinarily cute as well. I 
bring this with me as an insurance policy. I tend to draw with a regular wooden pencil, it's just my favorite uh, way of drawing. But in case I don't have a pencil sharpener or I am in a very quick mood, I just take out this one and I know that this works every time. And it's really stylish. On the back here you can change the type of lead. Currently I have a 2B lead. And then finally my ultimate favorite pencil. I absolutely adore this. It's a Koinor in B. It's a little harder than other pencils that I used to sketch but I found uh, it's uh, just that tiny bit juicier and it's what I really like. I bought a packet of 12 of these. They cost me about uh, 9, 10 euro. It's quite expensive for just regular pencils but they are so difficult to come about that every time that I see them I just buy them. With wooden pencil go a little pencil sharpener. This is just something I found in my local bookshop. It's called Moped Igloo. It's nothing bad, it's nothing crazy, nothing special. It's just a very plastic uh, pencil sharpener with a bit of a reservoir. It's alright, uh, does the job. I do like having a reservoir when I go about, I don't like to sharpen my pencil on the ground. And again, with pencil we go on erasers. I have here a very dirty kneadable eraser. Do you know that in Italian we call this bread eraser? I don't know why. And this is from Faber-Castell, it's their medium one. It's very nice to get uh, small details out or I just like to roll it on my paper like this to take off all that uh, graphite dust. And then this is a little gem. This is a Milan eraser. It's probably the best eraser that I could find and I have looked for a lot of different type of erasers, tried millions of them. This is just the best. It uh, cleans your page very, very well without leaving any marks. It is very, very smooth. The bad point, the negative point, is that it leaves a lot of dust behind, so be aware of that. In my sketchbook I always carry a ruler. This allows me to get a straight line when I want it and uh, especially I carry this to check my prospective lines in my building drawing. I have no idea about the brand, I think it's just uh, something really cheap I found. I bring with me some paper clip. These are great for sketchbook uh, to keep in place the sketchbook and uh, if something happens it's just uh, really sturdy and um, you get your sketchbook really windproof. Now let's talk about pens because I have a lot of pens. I do like to ink my sketches. Especially uh, recently I found a new love for line and wash uh, painting. Uh, line meaning ink and wash meaning watercolor. It's not that all of them are brand new or functioning well, but I will tell you now what. So let's start with the first one. This is a Unipin. Uh, waterproof and fade proof uh, fine liner I guess you can call it is the size 0.1 this is what I was saying is not usable or not a top shape I do like to carry a dried up uh, pen because I think it gives some sort of a texture to your drawing to your inking and this is literally the best stage of a fine liner when it's just dried up enough 
that it allows you to make some lovely interesting marks. This is a, another fine liner, this is from a Stadler Pigment Liner, same size, 0.1. This is waterproof as well and this is brand new. So I have the dried up one and the brand new one in the same size. I think 0.1 is probably my favorite size when it comes to inking. Then I do carry the um, same Unipin 0.1. This is a sepia color. This is also waterproof and fade proof. And this sepia color, this light brown color, is quite useful to add some details to your sketch. Something that you want to fade into the color for sure. And then in terms of fine liner, the last one is this. This is from Edding. 1880 and this is number 0.3 it's uh, waterproof and uh, fade proof this is a size higher because i found that uh, after inking in order to achieve some depth of image to highlight some parts i like to go back into my sketch and uh, just make some lines a little bit bolder on with the pens. I recently found these pens here. These are Micron PN and I think they are marketed as everyday writing. The ink is waterproof and fade proof as well. They don't have a size but I don't know if you can see the point. The tip is just a regular pen and they are um, ink pens, so it's not like a gel pen or anything like that. I got a black one and a brown one and they are just so beautiful. The amount of line variation you can achieve with this micro PN is crazy. Now, in my pouch I carry these things as well. These are not bullet, I wouldn't be allowed on a plane with these things. These are travel brushes and they are from uh, Escoda. Escoda is a Spanish brand and they are absolutely wonderful, wonderful brushes. They are my favorite brushes, I think, and I use them not just when I'm out and about, but as well when I am painting at home because the quality is just outstanding. So let's go with the first one. If I had to carry a brush only, this could be the one. This is an Escoda Versatile number no. 6. It's a, a fully synthetic brush and it keeps the point quite, quite well. It's extraordinarily well balanced as well and heavy, which is really helpful for me at least. I think it's marketed as a acrylic brush, but it's really flexible and holds a lot of water, especially when it's wet, it gets a very, very fine point. Second brush, I used, uh, I used this for um, finer lines. This is in a Skoda Perla and uh, it's the number two, it's quite thin as well and the sables are 100% um, acrylic sables and they are transparent, which is nice. And then this brush that I found, that I am sure it's a Skoda, but it's quite different from the Versatile that I just show you. It's uh, um, unnumbered, I suppose it's a number six one, considering that the bristles are literally the same and uh, yeah this is a rounder point I need to do some research on what's the name of this brush the rounder point it feels like is uh, natural fiber holds a lot of water and becomes a little moppy as a point I found this in an old uh, watercolor palette that I got second hand and I was extraordinarily surprised that they had this brush. If you know the model or if you have any idea who can 
uh, create such a brush, just let me know. This is everything that I carry with me. And as you can see, everything is super compact. Although I could do without a couple of pens or without bringing four different pencils. But once again, it's already annoying enough to be outside and painting without a desk, a table or anything. That I don't really want to make my life more difficult. Let's get into watercolors now. So here is my watercolor palette and you've seen this over and over and over. This is a palette from Windsor and Newton. Um, it has a A1 mark on the back. It's a light blue and it's very old. You can tell because it's all bumped up and uh, all scratched as well and is getting a little rusty in places. I got this when I first started painting. I took a painting class in my local library back in Italy and uh, I got in love with uh, watercolors. So I was like, I need to get some decent watercolors. And uh, yeah, this was my very first palette and it's still my only one. <laughs> I have others, but I think uh, this is probably the best I got so far. Inside the palette you can see it's all dirty and if you've been following me for a while you know that I recommend all the time to keep your palette dirty because it creates some consistency in your drawing. And the way that I keep my palette dirty is by color. So I get the blues, the yellows, then we go into the browns and uh, greys. Back here we have uh, more browns and greys and then greens and back to the blues. And this really works very, very well for me. When I need to use a red, for example, I just find a spot that it's more reddish and uh, I just mix with the color that's already there and so it creates some sort of trade union between my painting and uh, the next work that I'm doing. In terms of colors here, I have currently all half pans of paint. This changes constantly. On a regular basis, I change colors, I change type of paint, I change brand and everything and anything. There are a few staples though. The um, first few yellows are from Sennelier. I do like Sennelier yellows especially because they are very, very creamy. We have some raw uh, sienna raw ochre, sorry, uh, we have some uh, um, Sennelier yellows, some cadmium yellow deep and so on. Oranges and reds, they are from Windsor and Newton, apart from the middle one, this is Vermilion, which is from Sennelier. I do like Windsor and Newton because they are really easily available here in Ireland. The thing that I kind of don't like of Windsor & Newton is that they're a little bit bog standard. You can't really find anything exciting. The exciting part comes from the Sennelier. They are super creamy and flowy and you never know what you're gonna get. So I tend to keep a mix of the two. Browns, um, I think these currently are all from um, Windsor & Newton into the greys. This grey here is a Payen grey bluish, which is from Schminke. I bought it in a holiday and I instantly fell in love with that. You can see a little bit of that here. And it's kind of specific from Schminke. We have a couple of those colors here. I tend not to be mad about the schminke because it's, they are really saturated and I can't even tell what they are. So 
I think this and a couple of more are just good enough. Then we have more browns here. Um, these two are uh, Venetian red and uh, another light brown from Winsor & Newton. This pigment here is this big patch here, one that I use all the time, is Guanacridone Gold and is just absolutely amazing. Here we go with another schmink. This is Payenne Green Greyish. I think that is the right name. And it's this green here is so moody and nice and I find that everywhere, which is something that I really enjoy. It's really natural as the green goes. And uh, yeah, I you can tell what I was saying, like it's basically the same color of the gray in the palm form, which is very difficult for me. If you see this palette, it's really bright. I need visual reference. I'm out and about, I just chuck my brush there and I paint. Going on with the greens, this is my favorite green, this is Sap Green and currently I have a Windsor & Newton Cotman and Cotman is the student brand from Windsor & Newton. Uh, part is money, uh, professional watercolors are very expensive so when I can go with uh, student quality and I know that the quality is good, I go with that and this is one of those. Blues, apart from Cerulean, they are all from Sennelier and this is my favorite blue, it's uh, a French ultramarine. Cerulean, here we have another Cotman from Windsor & Newton, another student grade. This is because Cerulean Blue, if you have noticed, is extraordinarily pricey, like really expensive. So in this case, I really didn't have a choice of uh, buying the um, artist quality, so I bought the uh, um, student grade one, which is okay. It's just a little light, it takes more washes to get on. Uh, so this is my palette. Uh, now it's uh, old and battered but it's really really nice and I'm very familiar with this palette so I know exactly where the paints are, the colors. And more or less apart from probably this green here, this hawker green and uh, some few other, I use them all the time and I use them all. That's why I don't really want a teeny tiny palette. As you can see inside the palette we have space for brushes and I usually carry two brushes. This is a Raphael number 12. It's a very round, very juicy brush. And then I have a Raphael number 0 Precision. This is a square brush. I don't know if you can see. This is useful for bricks, to paint bricks, because it's tiny and square, and they fit perfectly in my palette here. So, I have a bonus of having two more brushes in my palette. The last piece of uh, equipment is this. This is a sketchbook branded Hannemühle. This is a watercolor sketchbook, uh, it's about 18-20 euro, depends where you find it. It's a NOT paper, so it means that it's quite uh, um, nice and smooth, not being hot, press, shiny smooth. It is uh, a landscape. So it opens horizontally. This is the first time that I actually own a landscape uh, sketchbook. I usually go for the portrait opening. I just wanted to try. It's not the most comfortable thing, but I'm sure it will uh, come useful when you get to paint some uh, landscape, for example. And yeah, what uh, can I say? It's probably my favorite sketchbook. I buy Hannemühle paper over and over and over again. 
and um, I have a ton of these sketchbooks and um, yeah every time I find a art supply shop uh, especially when I'm abroad on holidays I always go and get one of these so this is my setup you may think that I'm missing water but um, I tend not to bring water with me because it's really inconvenient, especially if I'm flying. So I tend to use the water that I find on the go, which means a bottle of water that I can just buy in a bar or I just ask for a glass of water and um, yeah, that's basically what happens or if there is a fountain, a water fountain by there, I just fill in a empty water bottle and then I paint from there. So nothing really fancy, but I tend to source my water on the go. And if I don't find any water, I'm not painting, I don't stress, I just do a quick sketch and then I take a picture and when I'm home I can just paint and that's it basically. So I really hope you enjoy this little tour around my um, to-go art supplies. Uh, I'll be really interested in seeing if you have any recommendation for me or if you have uh, different setups. Uh, that's always uh, nice to see. And uh, yeah, I spend hours looking at the YouTube video of other artists looking for walking through their art supplies. So always enjoy that. I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.